for coming in early in on a Wednesday morning, especially to the people we called up at 9 p.m. last night <laughs> um, to fill in for some of our spots. We'll, I guess, start with an introduction if we don't really know each other. I'm Motia, the director and producer for the project. We've got Amara as You get that odd one or two like, people looking at you, but like you're kind of like, are they looking at me because I'm Muslim? Or you don't you know. know. How it's like when you're on the train and yeah. you, get, you feel like you're getting stared at, but it's like, but is it just me? Really, am I projecting? Am I really pretty? Or are you <laughs> yeah. <the rest>? yeah. <laughs> a couple of years in Indonesia, I've lived a couple of years in Singapore um, and then we moved here and so from year three till year seven I went to Minaret College so that's an Islamic private school and then from year seven to year eight I went to Wellington Secondary so a public government school and then year nine to year twelve I went to McGrubberton Girls um, which is a selective all-girls school um, and then now I'm just finishing up my honours year in international politics. Um, hi, I'm Alicia. So I was born here, but my parents are originally from Pakistan. Um, I went to a Catholic primary school up until the age of grade four, and then I moved to an Islamic school. So private education throughout, but always with a religious focus. Um, and now I'm doing my Bachelor of Medicine, I guess. Um, about to start my final year at Monash. Hey, uh, my name is Samira. Um, I was born here, but my parents uh, came from Somalia around like 1995, something like that. Um, so I started off in a public school, Heidelberg, um, Gang Gang, no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and then I went to like Leila Primary School, and then I went to um, AA or Khalid, whichever one you know it as, um, from like year one, and then I graduated from there. Um, and now I'm doing Bachelor of Science at Monash. Um, so my name is Hafsa. I was born in England. Um, my dad is English, my mom is Pakistani. Um, and then we moved here in 2003, I think, yep. Yeah. Um, so I went to a public school first um, for two years and then I went to AIA with Samira. And then I went to a private girls school after that. And now I'm doing medicine. I think like because I spent the majority of my life in an Islamic school, like most of my friendship group is Muslims, but um, yeah, um, but like since like going to uni and like work and stuff like that, I have found, I have a few more non-Muslim friends, but yeah, the majority is still Muslim. Yeah, I think it's the same situation for me, like going to an Islamic school, um, I've got most of my friends are Muslim from there. And then even when I started uni, just coincidentally, my main group of friends were just Muslim people um, in my course. And in medicine, you kind of stay with the same people all the time. So yeah, mainly Muslim and maybe like a couple of non-Muslim friends. Yeah. I think for me, it'll probably be a good 50-50 or maybe like a 60 Muslim, 40 non-Muslim. Maybe because I... Um, yeah, graduating from, you know, a non-Muslim school and because you're a lot closer to your, your 12 friends as well. Um, and I guess my course, politics, uh, there. I think for the whole like three years that I was there, I think I only knew one other Muslim, per Muslim person in doing politics with me. Um, so it's about 50-50. Yeah, I would say the same, probably about 50-50, also because I went to a non-Muslim school. Um, then, I guess in uni, an interesting thing is that I have we have a lot of Muslim friends in our friendship group, but also just like other religious people, um, it, it be they Jewish or Christian. I think, I don't know if it's because I go to Melbourne, like Melbourne's quite a liberal school. Um, and so people try really hard to be culturally aware. Um, I mean, in my politics classes, yeah, yeah, there's really barely anybody ethnic. So um, yeah, obviously when we talk about terrorism and politics, 
they try really hard not to be like quite <laughs> like listen do you want to have a say in something but because like if you're if you're the token Muslim in the class yeah. and they kind of want to know what your opinion is but then at the same time you don't really want to be representing all yeah. Muslims everywhere at the same time it's yeah it's interesting yeah I've had some weird experiences like I remember in high school in year nine it was like religious education we were doing Islam and the teacher basically was like you sit at the front and teach this and I was like okay yeah. <laughs> so yeah you become that token Muslim I guess So back in year seven, um, yeah, I, I was shy. I am shy still. Um, but so I really struggled to like kind of find the way to ask someone about this because I was in a kind of environment where people don't know any, like they're not, they're not Muslim themselves. They don't know any Muslims at all. Like the whole suburb and the surrounding suburbs are all European. Which school? Like, which school? And I'll see. I'm like, oh, yeah. MLC? Yeah. Oh my god. So like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't like have even come across the idea of like people, like Muslims praying. So it's like, how am I going to say this to someone? So I actually like wrote a letter to the um, my like my teacher, and I was like, I need a place to pray, and she's like, okay, and she kind of um, passed me on to the chaplain, and then I used to just pray in the chapel every every lunchtime for six years. I was the only person who went to the chapel, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess with like, because I went to a Muslim school, the only experience I have like outside of that is like when I started work. And I remember when I started working, it was around like Ramadan, mm -hmm. it was like my first shift. And um, so I was thinking like how, because it was like from like three to nine or something, so it would have been like past um, iftar time. So I was thinking like, how do I ask them, you know, I need to go eat food and stuff, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> our friends would know this because they were just like, are you dumb? Anyways, because then I just didn't break my fast because I was like too embarrassed to ask, yeah? Um, so this is until like 9 o'clock I went home and I was like hungry oh and everything. I remember like the next day because two, there's like two, three, four Muslims already there, but they weren't there on the day when I started. So like the next day I come in, it was like the same situation. I was like preparing myself for that that hunger again <laughs> um but then so then it's like five o'clock hits and they're like oh let's go upstairs i'm like what are we doing upstairs they're like we're gonna break up fast i was like oh yeah let's go <laughs> so like it was, they'd already talked with the managers and everything was like already cool so i guess it was just my own like insecurity where i was kind of like hiding from it but they were totally chill about it and like from then on i was just kind of like five o'clock okay I, I just went upstairs you know what i mean so i guess it's just like going out and like making it known like this is when I need to pray and this is when I need to break my fast and the rest will be sweet yeah. hopefully yeah no I totally agree like it's that initial thing that's really scary like oh like how am I going to approach this and stuff but usually people are really really good about it like for the last two years I've been out in a regional country town um being placed at a hospital there and the staff there probably have never met a Muslim um or have had Muslim students but we had a couple of Muslims um who all went out to um Trogan. And when we first told them, like, oh, guys, we need to pray at this time, initially we would walk all the way over to the hospital's prayer room. And then eventually they started making us these little laminated signs that said, please do not disturb, but pray in progress. Oh, and we would, gosh. like, blue tack them on whichever, like, tutorial room we were using to pray in. And we were there for two years. And honestly, like, once you kind of take that initial step, people are just so, like, they just don't care. Yeah. Like, they're really chill. Yeah. They're so chill. <laughs> Go. <laughs> oh my god, um, car park. <laughs> the weirdest place, like, we went to night market, Victoria night oh, market, yeah. and so like, we were like, okay, so where do we pray? We don't know, we didn't know where to pray. So we'd have to, we went to like the back of a Victoria car park, um, the car park, and then like one person, two people had to pray, and one person had to like stand in front of them just in case the car didn't like turn in, like, you know, <laughs> run us over. <laughs> we were like, there's people praying here, because it was dark as well. That's probably like the weirdest place. Or like, Hoyts or something like in the corner while well, mm. you know people are like <laughs> like yeah that was weird but yeah probably that yeah we've done cinemas at gravel yeah. car parks mm. um to be honest probably the weirdest one is not because of like religious like kind of like oh i'm not sure it was more just the ground was wet and we were at a picnic place so i ended up playing on like <laughs> a picnic table on like the bench so I on top of the table yeah on top of the table because <laughs> the ground was wet um oh, 
But no, I think like most of the time, just weird ones would just be car parks. And, yeah, like, car parks. I swear with that forehead mark that you Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. I swear it's just like, oh. Yeah. Um, I, there was this one time where, um, so my sister, she plays a saxophone and they had a school performance in, it's called the Jazz Lab. Um, which sounds cool, but it's a bar. <laughs> the, but the thing is, uh, my sister had a solo, so we went to support her. Um, and it was like mother of time, and we're like, it's kind of far from home, <laughs> but we can't pray in a bar. <laughs> so, it's a bit of a sticky one. It's a bit weird. <laughs> so um, what me and my mum did, we just went outside. It was dark, um, but there was some like bushes <laughs> here, um, which... And then we just prayed right next to the bush here, <laughs> where people were like walking back and forth. But yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Church courtyard. That's another place I've had to pray. Mm. But you prayed, prayed in the chapel though. So <laughs> <laughs> Not really that way. It's fine. I definitely feel like Melbourneians. Such a weird word. But I feel like they're a lot more chill. Like. From my own personal experience, like, I haven't... You get that odd one or two like people looking at you, but like, you're kind of like, are they looking at me because I'm Muslim? Or, you don't you know. know. How it's like when you're on the train, and yeah. you, get, you feel like you're getting stared at, but it's like... But is it just am me? I, am I projecting? Am or? I really pretty? Or are you <laughs> <Yeah>. just like... <laughs> yeah. Am I, I looking really at me because I look good? Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, no, okay. Uh, but that, you get that, because... Sometimes it's like, is it my own vice? I'm expecting people to look yeah, at me, yeah. or they just looking past me. Like I never know. I'm kind of like, Ooh. but um, yeah. I don't know. As a whole, I feel like I haven't really experienced that. Where I feel like, because we hear stuff about like the US, and you hear like the environment there, and how it's so like, you know, get Muslims out, stuff like that, and like the whole Muslim man and everything. And I don't feel like I've experienced that as much here, or if yeah. at all. But I don't know about you guys. If you yeah. experienced it, I haven't really experienced that much. Um, some for it to be on racism or anything. Um, just like con contrasting to that when I went to France a couple of years ago for a few days and then like, like multiple incidents and I was like, oh, oh this really? place. Um, but like in 15 years or so in Melbourne, like not much. Yeah, I think there's a difference between being a Muslim in the US. For, like I think that's a good example. I think Australia and Melbourne in particular doesn't really have that history of like say 9-11 mm -hmm. where um, they where people would feel like they have a reason to be sort of negatively projecting their their feelings onto you mm -hmm. um, but yeah people yeah from my experiences as well Melbournians are very yeah they're very culturally aware they're very understanding and even with like you know what happened last week with the um, where the Muslim women in like Parramatta was like mm -hmm. verbally and like physically yeah. bashed. Um, that, that happened last week and I went out on the weekend just to go food shopping like at the South Melbourne market. People, I don't know if it was because I've been like a recluse for the whole year and like that was <laughs> my first contact with the public in a long time but <laughs> like people, I felt like people were being extra nice to me mm. at the markets like the stall holders and um, yeah. They were like, have a really nice day, like, they were, they were really friendly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they were trying to compensate for what happened last week, but yeah, people were cool. Um, one of the country town people that I saw like a few times as a patient, she was like, oh, the first time I met you, I was a little bit scared, but you're actually really normal. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, thank, thank you. Like, yeah, like.